Dear students, Namaskar. I hope that you all must be in sound health and must be excited for today's lesson. Children, today we are going to discuss Chapter 12 of Science of Class 6, Electricity and Circuits. Before we start with our chapter, let us recall what we already know. What do you need to see in a dark room? Which equipments are needed to get relief from heat in summer days? You see a wall clock in front of you. What is needed to run this clock? Now we will see what we are going to learn today. Electric cell, a bulb connected to an electric cell, electric circuit, electric switch, electric conductors and insulators. First of all, we will discuss about electric cell. We use torch to see in a dark room. Children, have you ever thought that from where does this torch bulb gets electricity? Electricity to the bulb in a torch is provided by the electric cell. Electric cells are used in alarm clocks, wrist watches, transistor radios, cameras and many other devices. Have you ever carefully looked at an electric cell? You might have noticed that it has a small metal cap on one side and a metal disc on the other side. The metal cap is the positive terminal of the electric cell. The metal disc is the negative terminal. All electric cells have two terminals, a positive terminal and a negative terminal. An electric cell produces electricity from the chemicals stored inside it. When the chemicals in the electric cell are used up, the electric cell stops producing electricity. The electric cell then has to be replaced with a new one. A bulb connected to an electric cell. Let us try to make an electric bulb light up using an electric cell. Take four lengths of electric wire with differently colored plastic coverings. Remove a little of the plastic covering from each length of wire at the ends. This would expose the metal wires at the ends of each length. Fix the exposed parts of the two wires to the cell and the other two of the bulb as shown. You can stick the wires to the bulb with the tape used by electricians. Use rubber bands or tape to fix the wires to the cell. Now connect the wires fixed to the bulb with those attached to the cell in six different ways as have been shown. For each arrangement, find out whether the bulb glows or not. Now carefully look at the arrangements in which the bulb glows. Compare these with those in which the bulb does not glow. You must have observed that bulb glows in arrangement 1 and arrangement 6. In case 1 and 6, the positive terminal of the cell is connected to the bulb and then the wire is continuous till the negative terminal of the cell. That means the current flows from positive terminal to the negative terminal of the cell and the circuit is closed. So the bulb glows. In case 2 and 3, the flow of the current is disrupted because the circuit is open and the current does not flow from one end to the other end of the cell. Hence, the bulb does not glow. In case 4 and 5, there is a continuous path from one terminal of the cell, but it ends at the same terminal. So, no current flows even in these two arrangements and the bulb does not glow. What is an electric circuit? In this activity, you connected 
one terminal of the electric cell to the other terminal through wires passing to and from the electric bulb. The two terminals of the electric cell were connected to two terminals of the bulb. Such an arrangement is an example of an electric circuit. The electric circuit provides a complete path for electricity to pass between the two terminals of the electric cell. The bulb glows only when current flows through the circuit. In an electric circuit, the direction of current is taken to be from the positive to the negative terminal of the electric cell. When the terminals of the bulb are connected with that of the electric cell by wires, the current passes through the filament of the bulb. This makes the bulb glow. Sometimes an electric bulb does not glow even if it is connected to the cell. This may happen if the bulb has fused. Look at a fused bulb carefully. An electric bulb may fuse due to many reasons. One reason for a bulb to fuse is a break in its filament. A break in the filament of an electric bulb means a break in the path of the current between the terminals of the electric cell. Therefore, a fused bulb does not light up as no current passes through its filament. Now we know how to make a bulb light up using an electric cell. What is an electric switch? Children, you all must have seen the arrangement in your homes where we switch on the equipments like fans, lights and they start working and when we switch them off, they stop working. In fact, these equipments work when electric current flows through them and they stop working when the electric current does not flow through them. And we use an electric switch to control the flow of electric current through these devices. When the switch is in on position, it allows the electric current to pass through them and the devices start working. Whereas, if the switch is in off position, it does not allow electric current to pass through them and the devices stop working. So, we see that switch is a device which control the flow of electric current into our devices. To see the use of an electric switch, we will make an electric circuit and for this we need a few materials. Connecting wires to connect devices. Battery. We have taken a small bulb in place of a device. Children, we can use a very common object, a safety pin instead of a switch and we will place all these objects on a cardboard and fix them with the help of a cello tape. So children, we connected all the devices with the help of connecting wires and here we have our final product in the form of a simple electric circuit with a switch which appears like this. Children, we have used all the same materials here, battery, pieces of connecting wires, a bulb which is connected in a holder and a safety pin. We have pasted all these materials on a cardboard piece so that all the devices remain intact and in place and we are able to handle our model properly. So children, this is our simple electric circuit. Now we will see the function of electric switch in this circuit. Electric switch has two positions on and off. When the switch is in on position, then the electric circuit is complete and when the switch is in off position, the electric circuit breaks. Now how do we know about the on and off positions of an electric switch? 
Now let us know about this with the help of a safety pin. We can also use a metal key or an iron pin instead of a safety pin and we can connect these with the connecting wires and place them on cardboard. The safety pin fixed in this way would be your switch in this activity. Now make a circuit by connecting an electric cell and a bulb with this switch. Rotate the safety pin so that its free end touches the other drawing pin. What do you observe? Now move the safety pin away. Does the bulb continue to glow? The safety pin covered the gap between the drawing pins when you made it touch two of them. In this position, the switch is set to be on. Since the material of the safety pin allows the current to pass through it, the circuit was complete. Hence, the bulb glows. On the other hand, the bulb did not glow when the safety pin was not in touch with the other drawing pin. The circuit was not complete as there was a gap between the two drawing pins. In this position, the switch is set to be off. The switches used in lighting of electric bulbs and other devices in homes work on the same principle. Electric conductors and insulators In all our activities, we have used metal wires to make a circuit. Suppose we use a cotton thread instead of a metal wire to make a circuit do you think that the bulb will light up in such a circuit? What materials can be used in electric circuits so that the current can pass through them? Let us find out. Children, this is a simple electric circuit. In this, there is a cell, a bulb, key and connecting wires. When we close the key, this completes the circuit. The electric current flows through the circuit and it makes the bulb glow. Children, if we cut the connecting wires, this would leave you with two free ends of wires. Bring the free ends of the two wires close to let them touch each other. Does the bulb light up? You can now use this arrangement to test whether any given material allows current to pass through it or not. Collect samples of different types of materials such as coins, cork, rubber, glass, keys, pins, plastic scale, wooden block, aluminium foil, candle, sewing needle, thermocol, paper and pencil lead. One by one, bring the free ends of the wires of your tester in contact with two ends of the samples you have collected. Make sure that the two wires do not touch each other while you are doing so. Does the bulb glow in each case? Now we will place an iron nail in between these connecting wires and we see that the bulb starts glowing because when we connected the iron nail with the wires, the circuit gets completed and electric current passes through the circuit and makes the bulb glow. The bulb does not glow when the free ends of the wires are in contact with some of the materials you have tested. This means that these materials do not allow the electric current to pass through them. On the other hand, some materials allow the electric current to pass through them which is indicated by the glowing bulb. So children, those materials which allow electric current to pass through them are called conductors of electricity. For example, iron nail, aluminium foil, coins, silver etc. If we place aluminium foil Instead of iron nail in the circuit, then also the bulb will glow. But children, 
if we place a piece of wood or rubber then the electric current will not flow and you will see that the bulb will not glow so children those materials which do not allow electric current to pass through them are called insulators for example rubber wood plastic and glass etc conductors and insulators are equally important for us switches electrical plugs and sockets are made of conductors on the other hand rubber and plastics are used for covering electrical wires plug tops switches and other parts of electrical appliances which people might touch your body is a conductor of electricity therefore be careful when you handle an electrical appliance summary electric cell is a source of electricity an electric cell has two terminals one is called positive while the other is negative the thin wire in the bulb which produces light is called filament of the bulb switch is a simple device that is used to either break the circuit or complete it materials that allow electric current to pass through them are called conductors materials that do not allow electric current to pass through them are called insulators electric current can pass through metals electric current always flows from positive terminal of the cell to the negative terminal glass rubber wood plastic are examples of insulators iron key copper wire silver etc are examples of conductors children now i am going to ask you a few questions and i hope that you all might be knowing the answers so my first question is true or false electric current can pass through wood so is this statement true or false this statement is false my next question the materials which allow electric current to pass through them are called and your options are conductors or insulators and the right answer is conductors my next question is dash is a simple device which controls the flow of electric current by making or breaking the circuit and the right answer is switch my next question will the bulb glow in this figure or not and the answer is no children with this we complete our chapter and i hope that you all must have listened to the chapter carefully and understood it well children stay home stay safe keep learning and keep growing thank you